Should it have been Texas? Should there have been a playoff? No use arguing now. That's what we bring Dennis Dodd aboard for. Lauren Shahadi here for CBSSports.com. Speaking with our college football expert, Dennis Dodd. Dennis, we've waited all season long for a national championship game. It is set. Oklahoma versus Florida. In hindsight, did the system work, Dennis? Well, it worked with an asterisk. I, I, I happen to think this matchup is going to be probably – the best, you know, one of the best, if not the best, of the BCS era. Now, obviously, with Texas having a, a gripe in the system, it's you know they're going to be out there, but they've got their chance. They have a slim chance in the Fiesta Bowl of getting a split national championship. But I think right now, second only to uh, USC Texas in 2005, this is the best game, and it has a chance to surpass that depending on how it goes on the field. When you look at those two teams, a couple Heisman candidates, you have a vote. Are you ready to go public with it? Can I get it out of you, Dennis? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I emailed it in earlier this week, um, and I went uh, Tebow 1, Bradford 2, and, and Colt McCoy 3. And int interesting, interestingly enough, Saturday changed my mind. I was a Bradford guy the whole time, and just seeing Tebow and the Gators in person uh, go against a quality defense and come back in the fourth quarter, his first, four, first fourth quarter comeback of his career, changed my mind. I mean, I, I, it's, a, it's a body of work thing. I, I was really impressed with Tebow, and a lot of people remember September 27th, he got up after that Ole Miss loss and basically guaranteed that they'd win any other, every other game without saying it. He didn't say those words, but it was as close to a called shot as you can get. And now here they are. I, you know, I, I can't give you any stats because they don't measure up to those other two, but I like them the best. Dennis, the rest of the BCS lineup includes Texas, Joe Pa, the BCS Buster, and Utah. Which of these teams, which of these games stand out to you? Well, I, I, like, the, uh, I like the Rose Bowl. And uh, obviously for you know, Joe Pa being back on the sidelines, perhaps, uh, USC's defense. I think the second defense, I haven't checked this yet, I think USC's the second defense this decade to average less than double digits on defense, which is exactly what they did. Um, and then uh, I like the Fiesta Bowl just because of what I mentioned, with Texas having a chance to get a split national championship. They're so sick of Ohio State and the Valley of the Sun that they're ready to kick them out. But you know, I think this will be good. Colt McCoy coming back next season. He will probably be the odds-on Heisman favorite if you, if you assume that Tebow and Bradford are going to leave. So this will be a nice kickoff for 2009. Well, let's talk about the coaching carousel. Mike Leach looks like he's well on his way to a contract extension. But what about that Auburn job, Dennis? Who gets Auburn? Well, uh, Mike Leach desperately wanted Auburn, and I'm not, I'm not convinced he's not out of it. He, he placed a call to uh, Bobby Lauder, who's their influential trustee there, just trying to feel him out, trying to find out what it took, what the job entailed, you know, what it took for him to get it. And we haven't heard much since then. It's been over a week since that call was made. Uh, the names you hear now are Jimbo Fisher, who, considers, who continues to say he's happy at Florida State, the coach in waiting, but I, you know, I haven't seen the words, I'm not going to Auburn. I think Auburn would get a war chest together and buy him out, which would be very interesting. You've got Jimbo Fisher, a coach in waiting at Florida State. They put in this poison pill. You know, If he even interviewed, he'd owe the school $2.5 million. But in this case, in this market, does that even make anyone blink? I think Auburn would pay it for the chance to interview and hire him. But, you know, that's a long shot right now. You hear names like Brady Hoke and, and Turner Gill of Buffalo going to interview. I don't think they're going to hire either, either one of those guys. I think it's very much up in the air. There's a lot of warring factions at Auburn, and I don't think they're, they're very close right now. So you don't think Leach is out of the picture when it comes to Auburn? I don't think it's out of the picture until he signs that extension. Um, and, you know, frankly, if I'm the AD at Texas Tech, I would have had this thing done two months ago. I mean, what else does a guy have to do for your school? Um, they were undefeated back then in the top ten. You know, how often is Texas Tech going to do that? So, uh, you know, he hasn't signed it. I think he's waiting to see if there's anything out there he can get. The, the window's closing. All the major jobs are being sewn up. We still have Syracuse out there, Mississippi State. So I won't believe it until he signs that extension. But if you're Texas Tech, you're, Tech, you're locking him up, right? You're locking them up, uh, but for how long? I mean, I, I'll be very interested to see when he, when and if he signs this extension, what the uh, what the buyout is on on either side. You know, are they going to put a poison pill in his contract where he can't talk to any other school in the Big Twelve? He can't talk to you know you know what's it going to take to get him from Texas Tech if he does does want to leave? Let's talk about the situation in Washington. Can Steve Sarkeesian turn around the Huskies? It wouldn't be hard to get better than they were this season. No, I think, and I, I think you just answered the question. When you're coming from 0 and 12, 
you know, the only winless team in the country. Anything you do next season is going to be a plus. And he is going to get his quarterback returning. Jake Locker will be back, so that's a plus. Um, they have some good players there. They, they've just hit rock bottom. I think everyone was dispirited with the uh, Tyrone Willingham campaign. He's a West Coast guy. He knows quarterbacks. He knows recruiting in the Pac-10. I, I, I really think Washington can be back in a bowl, in a bowl, not challenging for the Pac-10, but in a bowl within a couple of years with Sarkeesian there. Okay, I always ask you, Dennis, who's going to play for the national championship game? We already know who that is. Who wins it? What's your score? Well, I like Florida. Uh, I think the tipping point in this game is that Florida has a top-10 defense, a quality defense. The thing that has been masked through this run by Oklahoma is their defense is tremendously beat up. They're outscoring teams. Um, they're playing good defense, but not great defense. I think it's 68th in total defense right now is what I, what I recall. Uh, and I think that's going to make the difference when they go up, when Florida's defense goes up against these tremendous athletes from, uh, from Florida and Oklahoma. You've probably got the two best set of receivers in the country going against each other. But I like Florida. The line is three now. I'm saying it's about ten. I think Florida by ten. Dennis, let the fun begin. For Dennis Saad, I'm Lauren Shahadi. See you guys next time. All right, thanks, Lauren.